Seahawks uh, and the 49ers. And, man, we thought this one was going to be differently. Here's Pete uh, – go differently. Here's Pete Carroll talking about the star of the day, DK Metcalf. He, he was, he's just so freaking tough. And, and uh, whether, he's, you know, whether he's blocking guys or whether he's catching the ball or whether, you know, they smack him and the ball arrives and, and, and he's standing over those guys, you know, when they fall off of him. Uh, when he caught the ball on the, on the crossing route, I started sc- screaming that they weren't going to get him, right from, like when he was way over there because he's just too fast. And, and uh, uh, he just circled the whole defense and put it in the end zone. I don't even think they touched him. It was a great play. Um, we're so lucky to have him and, and have him grown and, and emerging as such a, uh, a dominant football player. It's really something. It's got to drive him crazy. Defensive guy through and through. To have all these weapons, everything that he hates about football, he's got now in Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf. And, you know, Chris, you said it all week. When they went back and looked at the film of the loss to the Cardinals, they had to have been beside themselves that they didn't involve DK Metcalf more. And there's a balance there. You don't want to make it into that OBJ dynamic where right. the offense becomes paralyzed by forcing the ball to a guy who maybe isn't open. But you know what? Metcalf, when's Metcalf not open, right? Yeah. Look at the difference from last week to this week. 12 catches, 161 yards, and two touchdowns. And uh, this guy, is he, he's not on his way. He's there. He's one of the best receivers, if not the best receiver in the NFL. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, agreed. I, I think right now, as we stand here, you know, halfway through the 2020 season, I, Mike, I think you're okay. Go ahead, say it. He's the best receiver in the NFL. I mean, if he, if I'm a quarterback, he's the guy I'm taking right now. I'll just say that. I'd go, oh, if we got one pick right now, wide receiver, who are you going to go with? I'd go, I'll, I'll take DK Metcalf. That's just that. That's that plain and simple. You know, yeah, thank you, Mike. You're right. I banged on the drum for it last week. I, they had to have been sick watching the film from that Arizona game on Sunday Night Football last week going, wait, we let a team play man-to-man against our freak of nature, DK Metcalf, this many times and we didn't attack it? DK Metcalf is like that $5,000 chip you got at, like, Las Vegas if you're Johnny Big Baller, right? That's what he is. You got to use You got to use it a little. You got to put pressure with people on it because – if you're just going to let people play one-on-one, you're letting them now cheat and take away other things in your offense. So, yeah, you don't want to go like you're saying, obsessive, right, where you want to just every play has got to be for him, like OBJ with the Giants and all those things. No, but you want it to be the point to where you make a defense go, really? Okay, we, we let you play man-to-man once the last series. You're going to do it again and again and again? you got to feed him until the point to where you go, no, you're going to have to double him. I'm sorry. Oh, and now you're going to eat Chris Carson up the middle and Tyler Lockett across the field and those things. They have a great chip there, and that they they didn't use it to its full extent, I guess, with my horrible analogy uh, last week. No, but but the thing is, and and we've moved on, but at the same time, I'd love to know how they internally broke that down and decided right? what went wrong. Was it Russell Wilson? not looking his way? Was it the play calls that were constantly away from him? Was he deliberately a decoy for that game and they thought it was going to be a Tyler Lock game? Look, when you've got DK Metcalf, you've got, you've got a guy who, and, and it's too early to compare him to Randy Moss. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. He, you, but you've got a guy who you have to get the ball to. Yeah. And any, I remember when Randy Moss was in his early days with the Vikings. It was a given. Anytime there was single coverage on Randy Moss, Randy Moss was getting the ball. Period. And they waited for those moments when Moss would be single covered and he's getting the ball. Period. That's where DK Metcalf is right now. Anytime he's single covered, he gets the ball. And maybe a lot of times when he's double covered, he finds a way to get open. LeBron James is taking notice, calling DK Metcalf Baby Bron. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, hey, look, you know, anytime you cross over like that and players in other sports are noticing your greatness, yes. there's plenty of great players in the NFL, but DK Metcalf now has that special aura about him in his second season. The sky is the limit. Everything that everyone saw in that chiseled physique, and we thought it was too much. We thought something wasn't right. And there were the vague concerns about the the injuries. And he did have injuries at Mississippi, and there was concerns about his limited route tree. And he's learned, he's grown. And maybe he's in the perfect place to do it working with Russell Wilson because I think Wilson understood what he had. And if he worked with it, if he sculpted it, if he just kept focusing on helping him get better, he would get to this point where he is. And now 
I think about these two tied together yeah. for the next 10 years. Oh. It's, a, it's a scary proposition. It, it, it is. I mean, I, well, I mean, I really – what I think about – you know, I know you brought up Randy Moss, and certainly it's that kind of – I honestly think he's more T.O. than Randy Moss, right? Just with that physique and kind of when he gets going, those knees fly up in the air. But, I mean, the, the touchdown Pete Carroll is talking about – I mean, that, that's insanity in the membranity. I don't know what to say. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean it is. I've heard. I, I, well, okay. Well, that's I mean, good. he's going uh, around I'll the edge. It. Almost every ride receiver in football, maybe other than Tyree Kill, is not going to be able to turn the corner there and go. They're going to go out of bounds or get pushed out of bounds. But he has the speed and body control to still stay in. And, you know, again, I don't know what happened in the draft. I'll, I'll say, you know, I don't know what anybody was looking at. You know, I know I've been wrong. I wasn't wrong about DK Metcalf, you know, and he was overanalyzed, Mike. And I also think, you know, in the NFL world, too, at times, too, oh, he's got a nose ring and, you know, he dyed his hair a different color. That scares people off, too. I mean, the NFL's got a lot of traditional base type of people there. But either way, the guy comes Isn't to work. Isn't that stupid? It's, it's stupid. In this day and age. It's stupid. What? I mean, and you get what you deserve. Yes. I remember Alvin Kamara at one point saying that he was going to meet with someone and, oh, the GM's kind of conservative. Can you take the the, the, the thing out of your nose? Right. No, I'm not doing it. Good, right. don't do it. What in the world? This is not 1972, no. people. Although there may be reasons when you look around to think that. No, it, it, it's, it's good. It, and that's what you get. If you passed on DK Metcalf because he dyed his hair or because he's different in some way, yeah. that's what you get, and, and the Seahawks benefit from it. Yeah, you're right. They do. And, they're, I mean, it's like, do you set, to your point, Mike, it's the perfect place. He's got a quarterback who is so humble and will always give him praise and make sure everybody does. Pete Carroll, just, you know, you know he's going to feed that and love that and everything about it, too. And, hey, we got to talk about the Seahawks. Yeah, they won the football game. DK Metcalf was obviously the big story of the day. But – the Seattle defense, I got to give them some love, too. I didn't expect that type of showing. I did not. I really thought that the 49ers offense would have their way. I mean, Seattle's defense has been the worst in football. It's not even close. And there they are yesterday, stopping the run, harassing Jimmy G, causing a few turnovers. So maybe they've learned something a little bit, too, here, how they want to play. I mean, it's two weeks in a row. It's, you know, last week wasn't horrible either. They had some moments against Kyler Murray. When they get Jamal Adams back, maybe they are going to be more of a force on this side of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was the big stunner for me, the fact that right? the 49ers couldn't run the football. They couldn't implement their offense the way they wanted to. And and now you've got injury issues on top of it. George Kittle's got an ankle problem. Jimmy Garoppolo left. They've got a short week with the Packers coming to town Thursday night, a team that the 49ers blew out twice last year at home and the Packers will be talking about their game coming up there. They're in greater need of a win on that short week and they don't have the injury issues. So uh, yeah, 49ers. It's just every time we feel like a team is moving very sharply in one direction, whether it's good or bad, it pivots. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC sports.